Hey y'all, Billy from Permapastures Farm. This is going to be a very important and profound video, but let me start with, here's one of my freezers, okay? Would you believe me? Now, notwithstanding this stuff up here, which is like, you know, future meals, if I told you what's in this door and what is here was a half a cow, would you believe me? Better still, would you believe me if I told you that was half of a steer that weighed out at well over 300 and let's say around 350, okay? The amount of meat you see here, when we weighed it out, turned out to be about 100 and I think 17 pounds, and that was being charitable. So from a hanging weight of 350 pounds to a 117 pounds is highway robbery. And the reason I didn't do this is because I don't have the facilities right now to hang a steer. So I bought this from a guy, brought it to a processor. And remember, I told you in the past, the most, the hardest things to find in this world is an honest mechanic and an honest butcher. Right there is highway robbery. And this is why we're setting ourselves up in the future to be able to process beef on this farm, but we're not there yet. So in the, in the meantime, we've been taking that in. I mean, it is absolute highway robbery. Okay, typically when you take an animal in, depending on the animal, it could vary. A marginal butcher should give you back about 60% of your hanging weight. I know this because I'm a butcher, okay? When you do it at home, I guarantee, especially using these methods that we teach, you'll bring home 75 to even 80%, if not more of its hanging weight. That's pretty astonishing, right? Well, the reason why that happens is because they have to do something in a turnkey fashion in a lot of these processors. And let's be frank, a lot of them are just flat out stealing your stuff. This is why you need to learn how to do this stuff at home. And this is why we teach it now. Coming up in the near future at uh, the Holler Homestead on behalf of Farm Where You Live is going to be doing a workshop. I suggest you go there and sign up. A lot of people are asking about this sort of thing. You're blowing up my, my email a lot of times with this stuff. Um, there's also an online butchery class that we, along with So The Land, have provided. But today, we're going to process a pig, and we've been down this whole process a number of times. And I guarantee you, of that pig, we're going to keep probably 80% of its hanging weight. Seem impossible? No, it's not when you do it on the farm. All right, y'all, let's get to it. All right, in this bus tub of the heart, liver, and kidneys, um, first of all, this is what we didn't get off of that cow, okay? So for us, I mean, you could eat this, absolutely. But we use it for dog food because, frankly, I'm not a big fan of organ meat in any form. So these will definitely go to the dogs. If you wanted, you could absolutely feed it to your chickens if you don't have dogs, maybe even your cats. Right now we got them hanging, and this is a very big pig. We're talking 400 pounds. Maybe a little bit more. Let me tell you what else we didn't get on that cow. The asabuco, which is essentially on the cow right here. They gave us two bones out of that asabuco. So here's what's happening in a lot of these butcher shops. They're either stealing your meat and putting it in their butcher's case, or they're taking it home. It's cold blooded. There's a whole lot of other cuts there on the pit, on a cow that you should have got, but the same exact thing happens on your pigs. This is why we were encouraging, and then plus, the cost these days. I met a guy at one of the previous festivals we did a while back, and two pigs, I think they charged him a thousand bucks a piece to process. You were not money ahead doing things that way. So even the processors are through the roof, and they're stealing your stuff. I'm sure there's some honest ones out there. I just don't know who they are. But I know one thing. There is nobody more honest than you when it comes to your meat. The pig feet. They're not going to give you that. Like I said, the whole asabugo on the cow didn't give you that. These are shanks on a pig. Um, a whole series of other cuts that you are not going to get. So here we are at this point. And if you've seen any of our butchery videos, if you want to see it in greater detail, like I said, we it'll be listed down below. Every step, every cut, and we're adding more to it all the time. So we're going to be having that even in, in much wider availability. And it's really great for you people that can't do it in person. But even if you can, it's a way for you to reference back on how to do this every step of the way yourself. So for what this means for us at this point, this pig's still dragging the ground, he's that big. We're gonna cut him down the sagittal plane, head's already removed, which means we're gonna basically cut him down the middle. And that's where we're gonna make all of our critical cuts. 
So here we are the next day, and I'm doing what to me is probably the most therapeutic thing in the world I know how to do, and that is process meat. I love doing it, I love teaching it, everything about it. But today's focus is all the things that you're likely not gonna see. Now, when you take your animal in to the butcher shop or the process or whatever the case may be, they're gonna give you the cuts you know about. And right here, this is a bone-in loin. This is gonna wind up being the boneless loin. I took the tenderloin out of there. This would be your uh, T-bones if you want. I'm gonna cut these off because I always wanna make the most meals as possible. Your processor couldn't care less. So I'm gonna cut these off, have another, instead of just having St. Louis style ribs, I'm now gonna have baby backs when I take this off. And then we'll have pork chops boneless down this side. I'll take this chine bone out, take boneless out of this side. But that's really not the focus of this video. Now, I told you in the beginning that the hardest thing to find is an honest butcher and an honest mechanic, and I will stand by those words. Let's think about this. I even kind of misspoke. I said that you could possibly get back 95%, but think about this. It occurred to me that really you get 100% of your meat back and everything else when you stop to think about it. Because at the processor, here, let me tell you what, in a lot of cases, what you're not going to see, whether it's a cow, there's a whole series of cuts that you're never going to see. So let's talk about right here, what you're probably not going to get a lot of times. Right here is fantastic leaf lard, basically surrounds the kidneys. And we got a lot of it on this pig and it looks absolutely sublime. Uh, this will be processed down and we'll, Michelle will make the most astonishing pastries you've ever seen. This is all either blood meat or dirty skin, things that we can't possibly put in our grind or render. Like a lot of the fat that we get on the back, remember there's three different types of fat on the pig as we first discussed, but we're not working in an aseptic environment. So we're gonna get dirt on things from time to time. Well, I'm not gonna eat it if I don't have to. Well, what is this good for? We got lots of dogs around here. I can even feed this to the chickens and I have and I do. Over here is the same thing, but also we got things in here like this heart. We got kidneys, we got liver over here. And then we got a lot, you can see the dirt on this stuff because like I said, the environment we work in, sometimes you're gonna have to scrape off the outside of it. But a lot of processors, if they have any of that, guess what, it's gonna go right into the trash can. It doesn't happen on the homestead. That's why I'm encouraging, especially in these times when people are paying a fortune. I mean, not everybody is raising pork like we do where we raise it essentially for 21 cents a pound. I know that sounds hard to believe, but using the methods that we taught you previously, that's how we're able to raise this for 21 cents a pound. How we raise pig or chickens rather for free, raise our eggs for free at a time in America where, where things are just overwhelming for so many people. In fact, I had a crazy conversation today with a lady who's really, really suffering but we can find ways to get us out of, out of this mess. Not only learn a new skill like butchery um, and any number of skills out there, but also take this stuff, put it in your freezer, feed your dogs, your pets, feed your chickens, because basically we feed everything that isn't pork to pork, everything that isn't chickens to chicken. And then combined with the chicken tractor on steroids, for those of you that are new, go check out the playlist, the multitude of information we have out there concerning, without a doubt, in my opinion, the most consequential chicken, egg, and compost producing system all on planet Earth, right there in that system. Well, we also have another system where we use, where we work with partners, where we've created relationships, where we raise this pork for 21 cents a pound. Don't believe me? I got the goods, I can prove it. I can show you what I do. So that's exactly why you should seriously consider doing this at home. Because like I said, if I had the means right now to hang a cow for, I like to go at least 21 to 30 days, they didn't even hang this thing for a week. A week. You can control the quality of every single aspect. And I don't care if I got to go out there and get this cow and quarter it up myself. I will never, ever, ever again bring it to another processor when I have all the skills I need to, I need to know how to do this properly. I will probably make a cold room and put a cold bot in there. I'm going to do whatever I have to do, but I will never again bring an animal in there where I, for crying out loud, a 340 some pound hanging weight reduced down to 117 pounds or whatever it was, absurd. 
Anyway, don't want to beat that dead horse to death, but it, it, it happens to the best of us. I even told these people I'm a butcher. They didn't give me any of the organ meats, any of the, and that's another thing. This is another thing they didn't give you, or didn't give me, bones. Every single bone on this animal you could use to make, I don't know who, how many people make pork broth out there, but I know a lot of uh, people in Asian cultures do. But what do we do with it? We turn it into the bone sauce that works so well as a deer repellent. So everything in that bucket, everything on this animal will be used in some manner or another. So in truth, at the end of the day, to kind of bring this all together, you really bring it, you really get 100% of your animal back if you do it on the homestead, as opposed to some minuscule amount that, you know, you have no say on the matter. So let's learn these skills. Let's get this stuff. Let's learn how to process these process these animals ourselves. Better still, let's learn how to raise these animals. So who cares what the egg prices are doing? If at the end of the day, you're using these methods to feed yourself and your family, remember the prime directive of permaculture. That's it in a nutshell. So y'all also, also one more thing I'd be remiss of is that there's a lot of things in here in terms of dog treats, like these liver right here, and even the hearts that we will freeze dry and make dog treats out of. I mean, I'm gonna, this is gonna be just straight up dog food. It'll be incorporated into the eggs that we feed them. But stuff like your organ meat, uh, we'll put it in the freeze dryer out there. I know a lot of places that have done that in the past and we're gonna do it. We've never actually done that, but I've done it in other settings in other butcher shops. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We'll put that stuff in the freeze dryer and we'll make it all happen. So look y'all, at the end of the day, this isn't hard. If it weighs, it pays. Even if you turn this entire animal into sausage, you're still money ahead. All right, y'all, if you need anything from us down below, check out uh, the description box and uh, check out the website. Till next time, this is Billy from Perma Pastures Farm, where permaculture is my passion. We'll see y'all.